Hello and welcome to the eco tutorial. This one is going to be about how to eco and not about when to eco. When to eco is a bit more complicated than this and I'm going to make this video soon. But let's focus on how to eco for now. And I've ordered all sources of economic income by their efficiency. And usually you measure efficiency by uh, the time these structures need to repay their own cost in mass. And we start with Reclaim, because Reclaim doesn't need any time to repay its own cost. So when you can get Reclaim, that's always the best source of economy in this game. And it will always stay this way. And usually when you get Reclaim, you use it to upgrade mixes. Because unless you really need units right now, the Reclaim is going to help you in the long run more if you put it into mixes instead of units. If you're under attack, you can still use it for units. But make sure not to get used to reclaim, run out of reclaim, and then you don't have mass upgrades. That's what some people do. And that's always very unfortunate. The second best source of eco in the game is the T1 max. It takes 18 seconds to repay its own cost. And by the way, you may want to take notes. Seriously, this is like the only tutorial for which you want to take notes. This one has many numbers and these numbers are actually important. So please take notes. I'll repeat the T1 max takes 18 seconds to repay its own cost. If you assume that the T1 max is going to die, which is frequently the case, and if you assume that your enemy is going to get the reclaim and you aren't getting any reclaim of the wreckage, then it takes 33 seconds to repay its own cost, if the enemy gets it, right? T2 max is next on the list and it repays its own cost in 3 minutes in 45 seconds, okay? But heaven, I did the math and I came up with 2 minutes and 30 seconds. What are you telling me about 3 minutes and 45 seconds? Well, professor, thanks for double checking. Your math was correct, but your assumptions were wrong. The T2 max doesn't produce 6 mass per second. It produces 4 mass per second. But it says 6 mass here, right? So why? Well, because when you upgrade a T1 max to a T2 max, you're losing 2 income the T1 max was generating. So the actual benefit, the net benefit from this upgrade is just 4 mass. And you definitely need to take this into account that these six mass you get from the T2 max come at the opportunity cost of not having a T1 max more. And that's how you end up with three minutes and 45 seconds. If you think your T2 max is going to die and the enemy is getting the reclaim, which is unfortunate, but it happens, then it's going to take six minutes and 45 seconds to return its own cost. Next on the list would be the Ring T2 Max. And this one takes 4 minutes and 30 seconds to repay its own cost. So usually you should first build T1 Maxes, then upgrade them to T2, and then ring them. In some situations it may make sense to build mass storages before you even upgrade the Max to T2. But this is not because you want the income, this is because you want the storage, because you expect Reclaim to come in soon. For example, when your ACU is reclaiming something, and you want to keep most of it, instead of overflowing it to your allies or wasting any, right? That's when you build storages earlier. So and do you upgrade all Maxis to T2 before you start ringing the first one, assuming that you don't need the storage? Well, usually there is travel time involved in between the mixes and usually there are reasons why you want the storage. So it doesn't matter too much whether you first upgrade all extractors to T2 or whether you upgrade them, ring them, 
upgrade the next one, ring the ma next one, and so on, right? So this difference in terms of e efficiency doesn't usually matter too much. So you can do both. But you cannot build a T3 max and not ring it first, right? It has to be a ring T2 max before you upgrade it to T3. And the T3 max takes 4 minutes and 15 seconds to repay its own cost, assuming the ring was already there. If the ring was not there, it takes much longer and it's not efficient, so don't bother doing it. This is your basic stuff. What did I forget? Well, I always forget something, right? So I forgot the RAS. And the RAS is in between the T2 max and the ring T2 max in terms of efficiency. And the RAS ACU takes 4 minutes and 30 seconds to repay its own cost, just like the ring. But it also generates power, right? So usually you should build this in between if you want to have the RAS. And there have been some changes in the current patch. So if you're playing the beta version of half, which is patch 3660, then the factions will differ. And if you play Seraphim, it doesn't take 4 minutes and 30 seconds to return its own cost in mass. That's for Aeon. The Seraphim RAS gives you 2 mass less per second, but also more power in return, right? But if you want to look at the mass value, then it's going to take 5 minutes and 13 seconds for the Seraphim RAS to return its own cost. The UEF RAS takes pretty accurately 6 minutes, and the Cybern RAS takes pretty accurately 7 minutes. This is not so bad because these factions get more power from their RAS, but if you just look at the mass, then there is a difference, right? And it's quite notable. What's the difference between RAS and ARAS? Well, the cost is the same, the uh, outcome is the same, so usually uh, you can apply the same math to both. All of this, by the way, is uh, not taking into account how long it takes to build these structures. This is assuming instant build, right? Which is which is not a bad assumption, usually. Because you can like prioritize it, get a lot of build power and so on. Next on the list is the T3 power generator ringed by T2 mass fabs. And I usually place some storages on the corner because when I scale up my eco with these, then I want some extra storage. This is the stage of the game where large-scale T3 land battles happen, or experimentals die, and if I don't have storage to keep the mass, then that's usually bad. So I get some extra storage on the corners for adjacency, and the storage. And this exact template, and you can just copy it, build it yourself, is quite fast to make. This exact template is going to take 5 minutes and 30 seconds to repay its own cost. So not too bad, right? But you probably need to ship it. Otherwise it's uh, going to die pretty quickly. And the T3 mass fabricator is less economically efficient than the T2 mass fabricator. But sometimes you'll still build it if you want to save space or if you want to have like a better control of balancing your economy, if you're using stuff like engineering stations or lots of support ACUs to build these, right? And the reason is that one of these produces as much as one of these spends. And assuming you already had the shield, this is almost energy neutral and you're just getting raw mass out of it. So you only build this when you're like expecting the enemy to have arty soon or when you're like really lazy usually or you are on, uh, on the unit cap right let's hope this doesn't happen but sometimes it does so that's the intuition behind the t3 mass fabricators and these take eight minutes and 40 seconds to return their own cost so that's a lot more than this Next on the list would be the RAS preset support ACU, 
and this one takes 9 minutes and 45 seconds to repay its own cost in mass. So that's what you need to know in terms of efficiency. And you may want to compare the gun ACU and the ARAS ACU. Usually if you go for a combat path, meaning you have the shield upgrade, the gun upgrade and the radar upgrade, or the equivalent of whatever your fashion has, then this can essentially do the same as an ARAS ACU. Because if you use it correctly, then usually this gives you an experimental, which the enemy doesn't have, and this kills an experimental if it has to, right? Without dying, of course. So you can use a combat ACU the same way you use a tech ACU and an ARAS ACU. It differs in handling, but the outcome in terms of economy is usually the same. And the combat ACU usually has more direct and sooner battlefield impact. But of course, in the long run, the uh, ARAS ACU is going to be better because it need to keep it safe at some point. And if it started repaying its own cost with a mass generation, then that's usually good as well. And it comes down to style and taste, which one you prefer. And of course, it also depends on the situation. Now you need to keep in mind that all economy in this game is measured in relative sizes. So these numbers I gave you are nice, right? But if a few tanks kill an upgrading T1 max that's 99% finished, for example, then this is going to be way better than having one max more than the enemy, usually. Because this is way cheaper, right? So if you have a production lead, then you should definitely use it and kill stuff. Well used raid can also work out to create an economic advantage. If the enemy has more eco than you, you can always RD drop next to their mixes and also ground fire the wreckage so nothing is left behind and to even it out. Three bombers are pretty nice to take out T1 mixes or T1 pigeons because they just need one bomb and it dies. And of course you have TML. And one missile costs 180 mass and that's only a fraction of a T2 max. But this can kill a T2 max in one projectile. Usually it leaves no or super little reclaim behind. And sometimes you even get so lucky that you can kill T2 power or the factory that is upgrading to T2. And this is perfect, right? So you should always ask yourself whether you should eco or whether you should raid. And what's better in the current situation. But as I said, when to eco is going to be the topic of another video. So tune in when it's uploaded.